We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three, listen. Welcome to Finances, your home for all things financial, investment, money, and lifestyle. Hosted and curated by the very talented team of certified financial planners and Burke Britain Financial Partners. Yeah, so let's uh, let's go, Adam. Give us a summary of where we're at in the markets at the moment. Yeah, certainly the markets uh, have had a fantastic run over January, and we really saw that uh, come through in a lot of the clients' portfolios. We definitely saw that there was a lot of international buying coming into Australia as a way of a uh, pseudo China play or the reopening of that China play. So we're really comfortable with what's happening in uh, in Australia as far as sidestepping a recession. I do think overall that the US is still going to go through some more higher interest rates, which will generally will bring the entire world up on their interest rates as well. And US passing all their inflation onto the rest of the world, we're all having to deal with that on, on a regular basis. But we have seen supply chain issues now abate. That is certainly allowing goods and services to be moving freely across countries. And really, at the end of the day, we think Australia will sidestep a recession due to our uh, fantastic resource, uh, as well as our strong economy. So Adam, trans- seems, I- Ad- Adam seems a bit too opt- optimistic for me. Ben, what do you think? He's, <laughs> he's in the PB court of optimism. Uh, Always up. <laughs> can, only, can only get better. <laughs> right, oh, Sam, what, uh, what, are we, what are we liking in our portfolios and what are we looking to maybe exit out of our portfolios uh, in, the, in the near term? So we are adding to energy. Uh, we like energy. We think it's cheap. Uh, Santos, Woodside are the way we're doing that. Uh, we're also um, reducing exposure to banks. We think their short-term benefit of higher interest rates and their expanding net interest margins will be eroded by rising bad debts as, uh, as, as the uh, dramatic increase in rates starts to hurt consumers. So reducing banks where we can adding to uh, stocks which have been unduly hurt by higher interest rates, which is the tech sector, James Hardy, Zero, uh, and uh, essentially uh, we also like South 32. We're looking for uh, adding on any weakness to copper exposure. And um, I think that's probably it. So uh, we, we, we're looking to benefit from this rotation into stocks that have been hurt by um, high interest rates uh, and essentially that's the tech sector and resources. And your tip, uh, Sam, on our longer extended, uh, summary, we talked about interest rates. You mentioned the U S interest rate market actually coming off. What's the, what's the prediction about when we see a peak in rates and they start to reduce, which will obviously have then have a flow and effect to everything here in, uh, or domestically. What, what's your tip? We won't well, hold but- you to it, mate. Well, I think, I think rates have peaked uh, in the US by the sounds of things. So I think we've already seen that. And that's why the markets are rallying so hard. Um, whether or not we see that in Australia, I'm not quite sure. So they still seem to be sticking to their, their, uh, their, their, uh, their strong stance. But um, I reckon by mid-year this year in Australia, we'll see the peak of rates. When do you, when, we, do you we, pre- when do you predict we're going to see the reduction? That's what everyone wants to know. <laughs> well, uh, that's pending on data, right? So, yeah. yeah, I mean that's so you've seen, you've seen, you've got to see uh, employment rollover. You've got to see retail spending rollover, uh, and we haven't quite seen that yet. We've seen house price declines, and quite to try, quite dramatic ones, but that hasn't seemed to have shaken the consumer just yet. So we'll wait for that. Like I'll start, you know. Yeah, I, we'll wait for the rollover in consumer spending. That'll be quite dramatic. Well, incidentally, we've got a client who sells, he's a he's a uh, car dealer in Sydney, and he's already seeing that start to roll over, that COVID premium in cars coming down. So I think it'll come, I want to say, by mid-year as well, maybe sooner. Um, uh, yeah. There is, there is talk in the market that it will be close to the end of this year that they might start to reduce rates. But I'm with Sam. That that data really needs to sort of support that before they they start to reduce. Mm. And can I uh, argue that your uh, you re- you you remain reasonably optimistic that from a property point of view that there isn't 
a proverbial cliff that will uh, fall off, that in fact the banks are reasonably well positioned to accommodate that and that the market itself, uh, although probably see a reduction, we won't see something circa uh, US 2008, 2009 in our own domestic property market. Is that fair? Well, uh, you, you go, Sam. Well, so like uh, we're about to find out like because we just had a dramatic increase in interest rates but the mm. banks are well provisioned what i will see is that what i will say potentially is that it will affect their profits right because their bad debt provisions are very low right and they have been low and that's because uh bad debts have been low right but there's a chance they go higher as we start to work our way through this high rate interest rate cycle as you go from all the all the mortgage holders who are enjoying low rates to a very very high rate like it's a it's a dramatic increase that we actually haven't seen before. So, uh, you know, you've seen property prices already down 10 to 15%, depending on where you are. So the quicker we see the end of the rate cycle, the quicker you see the, 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 the bottoming out of the property market, if you like. So no promises just yet, Jay. It's okay, mate. I won't hold you to it anyway. It's all good. <laughs> ben, you got anything else? No, I think it's a good wrap. I think it's, been consistent for a while so that's the main thing we're not chopping and changing it's just that stick to the system good diversity things we trust and have been around for a long time which is always a good comfort point for clients so perfect thanks for the update guys always a pleasure no we hope you enjoyed today's episode if you're keen to understand more about how financial advice could benefit you follow us on instagram facebook and twitter at burke britain fp or google burke britain financial partners Check out our client reviews, testimonials, and make a time to meet one of our certified financial planners by clicking book now on our website. Thanks for listening. Any information contained in this podcast is of a general nature only. No account was taken as to the objectives, financial situation, or needs of any particular person. Therefore, before making any decision, listeners should consider the appropriateness of any information with regard to their particular objective, financial situation, needs, and seek independent advice from a licensed professional specific to their circumstances. All right. That translates to don't be a moron and act on what some random person says on a podcast. Take personal responsibility, do your homework, ask questions and speak to an actual human that knows what they're talking about before you do anything. PP Financial Solutions Proprietary Limited Trading is Burke Britain Financial Partners are authorised representatives of AMP Financial Planning Limited AFS license number 232706.